All right, so this is gonna be part two of trauma resuscitation updates. In part one, we covered minimizing iatrogenic injury. This time, we're gonna be talking about restoring perfusion for part two. Now, there's not a lot of trials to talk about this, but I think there are some basic concepts that we should probably keep in mind. So when we're talking about restoring perfusion, I think we already established in part one, we really wanna minimize the amount of crystalloids we're giving these patients. And we wanna really focus on blood products. So we wanna put back what the patient is losing. Now the question becomes, in what ratio should we be doing this? And the study that best answers this, I think was published in 2015, which was the PROPER trial. And they basically randomized patients to packed red blood cells, plasma, and platelets in a one-to-one-to-one distribution versus a one-to-one-to-two distribution. And here's what they ended up finding. That one-to-one-to-one plasma platelets pack red blood cells, there was no difference in 24-hour or 30-day mortality, but it achieved faster hemostasis and there was less death due to exsanguination at 24 hours, which is why I think many of us, when we're doing our massive transfusion protocols, are now doing a one-to-one-to-one -one -one kind of component-based uh, therapy for these patients. Now, there was an interesting trial that got published recently in the last year or two called the refill trial. And this was looking at giving blood products in the pre-hospital system. And what they basically looked at was pack red blood cells and lyophilized plasma versus placebo, which was 0.9% saline. And what they ended up finding in this study of just over 400 patients was there was no difference in mortality and or lactate clearance. Now, this was kind of like a, I don't get it kind of study. Like, how is this a negative study? And I had some thoughts about that. So first of all, the majority of these patients, their transport time was super short, like less than 20 minutes. And so are we really gonna make that much of an impact on these patients when transport times are really short? The second issue is that these were mostly blunt trauma patients, so these were not penetrating injuries. And I think we're starting to realize more and more and more that blunt trauma patients are not the same thing as penetrating trauma patients. However you want to look at that, whether the amount of tissue that's injured, the vessels that are bleeding, whether it's on the venous or arterial side, there's a lot of ways to look at it. And then the third thought was is that as we get better with our pre-hospital care, we're going to just start bringing sicker patients to the hospital, which means we're going to see higher mortality rates. And I think that's what we see in this study is that they are doing such a great job in the pre-hospital care of these patients that we see this higher mortality. And so we're not going to see that separation in mortality or lactate clearance, which was their primary outcome. Now, to end this talk for part two, I think we should talk a little bit about massive transfusion protocol. So why do we do this? So this is a hemostatic resuscitation, right? And we're trying to do a balanced transfusion to avoid dilutional coagulopathy that can happen with these trauma patients as they're losing blood. Now, there's lots of scores out there. There's lots of ways to predict. One of my favorites is this ABC score because it's super easy to remember. And it's really four things you have to remember. Is there a penetrating mechanism? Is the systolic blood pressure less than or equal to 90 millimeters of mercury? is the heart rate greater than or equal to 120 beats per minute? And then is there a positive abdominal fast? And if you have two or more of these features, then you should be considering a massive transfusion protocol. Now, in my neck of the woods in San Antonio, we've started doing whole blood uh, versus component therapy. And there's just not a lot of big literature out there on this. This was a narrative review, which I think kind of went through all the literature and kind of looked at all the studies that are out there comparing these two ways of giving blood products back. And what they ended up finding is that whole blood makes logistical sense. You're basically putting back what the patient's losing. But unfortunately, most of the studies we have on this topic are really small studies. They're not powered right. There's methodological concerns. And I do think that there is promise um, as we have been incorporating this into our practice here in San Antonio. I think we just need that one big study and then this will start becoming mainstream and many places, as I said, are already starting to do this. 
So for part two, restoring perfusion, there's really four things you need to know. The proper trial published in 2015 showed us that component therapy, plasma platelets, pack red blood cells, and a one-to-one-to-one distribution is the way to go. The refill trial, which was looking at pre-hospital blood and lyophilized plasma, was a negative trial, but there were some methodological concerns and then the things that I talked about, the reasons why maybe we didn't find a positive outcome. Massive transfusion protocol, if you don't have one, you should have one at your institution. It helps avoid dilutional coagulopathy, and I think we have more than enough evidence to show that this is the way to go as we're taking care of these patients. And then whole blood, this shows promise. It's something that's on the horizon. There's a lot of institutions that are doing it now, Um, and just stay tuned because I think we are one big study away from this becoming kind of the mainstream of the way that we uh, resuscitate these patients in the pre-hospital world. And there you have it, part two trauma resuscitation updates. Stay tuned for part three and part four, which I will get out as soon as I can. Leave me your thoughts, comments, questions. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.